Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Clark from Thailand Unplugged, back with the latest news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. Let's have a quick preview of what's coming up today. Miss Thailand Universe entrant disqualified for being a naughty girl and cheating, or so they say. Look out everyone, millions of Chinese are about to go on vacation, but not where you think. Thailand's gross domestic product, or GDP if you like, forecast to plunge very, very badly, worse than any other Asian country. And why? Let's find out. Australia's Prime Minister tells the Australian people what countries they will be able to visit at Christmas time. Once again, I'm Stephen Clark. Those and other stories coming right up from the land of smiles and Southeast Asia. But first up, let's have a quick look at news making headlines around Southeast Asia at the moment. Student activist group, who go by the name of Bad Students, visited five different schools in Bangkok, ended their visit at the Education Ministry demanding education reform. The group was demanding the end of harassment of students, especially on terms of allowing them to express political views, education reform, to scrap outdated rules and address illegal abuse in schools that have dominated news coverage lately. 11 kindergarten teachers at Northumbury Private School to face child abuse charges after allegations of beating their students up by up to 60 times. Police from Northumbury Province Police Station visited the school investigating security cameras in 10 kindergarten classrooms. Annual Chinese Moon Festival celebrated in Banglamang, Thailand. They have been celebrating the festival for the last eight years, but until now, having formal events. Although the tradition of celebrating this event goes back for hundreds of years, this year the festival is united under the concept that the circle of the moon unites the people. Thaksin Shinawatra, the former Prime Minister of Thailand, has tested positive for the Chinese coronavirus and has reportedly already recovered. The former Prime Minister had reportedly conducted a COVID-19 test during his stay in Dubai. Tuxin was the Prime Minister of Thailand from 2001 to 2006. More on that story later on in the bulletin. <laughs> Miss Universe Thailand favourite was removed from a contest on Wednesday for using an insider for personal benefit. Miss Universe Thailand pageant held a press conference to announce the contestant's removal, saying all contenders had to follow the rules and regulations detailing in the contract they signed. She also pointed out that the contracts clearly state that no outsiders can be brought in as monitor and that the organisers reserve the right to disqualify a contestant if she violates the rules. Payabong also said she has evidence to back the dismissal in the case. She also said, Well behaved, smart girl. We love her, but rules are rules, Payabong said. Meanwhile, on a television interview, the contestant said she accepted the decision and apologised for not reading her contract carefully. Meanwhile, her manager, who has caused all these problems, claims to have never seen the contract. China contains the affectionately known COVID-19, commonly known in the West as a Chinese virus. Now hundreds of millions of people there are about to go on a vacation at the same time. Yes, China is on the move again. As October the 1st arrives, hundreds of millions of people are expected to pack highways, trains, planes for a national day holiday. One of the busiest times for travellers in the world's most populous country. The eight-day mid-autumn festival break is China's first major holiday since it emerged from the coronavirus outbreak. While life has largely returned to normal in the recent months, the upcoming Golden Week holiday will be an ambitious test of China's success in taming the virus and a much-weighted boost to the economy and recovery. Last year, a total of 782 million domestic trips were made during the holidays generating nearly 650 billion yen, 95 billion US dollars I'd imagine. And this was tourism revenue, according to the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. 
In the United States, the number of coronavirus cases topped 7 million over the weekend. Oh, I'm sorry, 7 million and 2. President Trump and the First Lady have tested positive to the Chinese coronavirus. Much of Europe is now in the grip of a second wave of infections. Even countries largely spared by the first wave, such as Greece and Croatia, have seen cases surging as tourists took summer vacations following the reopening of Europe's international borders in June. But now in China, the virus is much less of a concern for the Chinese holidaymakers, given China's close to zero local transmissions and some of the world's strictest border control measures. Yes, and we've seen how well that worked for the rest of the world. The Chinese coronavirus first detected in the central city of Wuhan last December before spreading across the globe has been largely contained in China since March. In the following months, small-scale outbreaks have occasionally flared. Back then, the Chinese coronavirus outbreak was sweeping through Wuhan after local authorities initially silenced healthcare workers trying to sound the alarm. The healthcare workers in Wuhan were just troublemakers spreading false rumours to the media about some silly virus. Wuhan, the original epicenter of the outbreak, has become a popular destination for Chinese tourists since its lockdown was lifted in April last month. Other destinations on Chinese tourist lists are Auschwitz in Poland, the Nazi extermination camp, Chernobyl in Ukraine, scene of the worst nuclear accident. Yes, those two last destinations are right up there with Wuhan. So stick them all on your must-visit tourist disaster list. Thailand's GDP is forecast to be the worst economical recession among Asian countries in the Chinese coronavirus pandemic, said the World Bank. According to the organization's study of the economical growth of countries in the Asia-Pacific region, after the Chinese coronavirus outbreak, Thailand's economy could contract by 8.3% or as much as 10.4% if the trade and tourism sectors, as well as political uncertainty, still worsen by the end of the year. The study mentioned Thailand had faced many local transmissions of the Chinese coronavirus cases during the start of the pandemic, but had them controlled at the early stage by implementing strict travel and health measures and social distancing to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. This included closing their borders to tourism, a major industry for Thailand. But the measures are a double-edged sword since the country heavily relies upon income from exports and the service and tourism sectors. They are now resulting in the sluggish recovery of the domestic economy, which has become worse than China and Vietnam where the economy revival has now potentially begun. If the study holds accurate, it will be the worst economic contraction for Southeast Asia's second largest economy, and even much worse than its 7.9% contraction in 1998 after the 97 Asian financial crisis. The World Bank said that it will take at least three years for the country's GDP to recover to pre-Chinese coronavirus standards, they said. A potential second wave of Chinese coronavirus, the ongoing drought and floods, along with political tensions, including the resignation of members of the economical team and ongoing anti-government protests in the country, would possibly affect the Thai economy in the third and fourth quarters of this year, until next year, or in the worst case scenario, for another three years. Although the Thai government has launched several monetary stimulants, such as We Travel Together campaign or additional holidays for their own people to boost their domestic economy, they are not going to potentially recover the national GDP as a whole. Although a difficult problem, keeping the foreign tourism industry shut was destroying the country's infrastructure for tourism. The government has to admit that the emergency degree is worsening the country's economy. It is advised to partner with the private sector to come up with alternatives to balance the implement of public health measures and the revival of the domestic economy. Let's hope Thailand can find a solution to these problems.
The Premier of Australia, Mr Scott Morris, reveals the countries Australians will be able to visit first when overseas travel bans are lifted and then calls for every state to open its border before Christmas. New Zealand, South Korea, Japan and Pacific Islands, such as Fiji, may be open to the first countries that Australians will be able to visit, Scott Morrison has said. Yes, the Prime Minister revealed on Tuesday that is considering a traffic light system that allows people entering Australia from covert safe countries to avoid hotel quarantine. Overseas travel has been banned since March and remains unclear when it will resume, but Mr Morris said the first step will be to open safe locations. Our borders will open up at some point to safe locations, whether it be New Zealand or parts of the Pacific, or places like South Korea or Japan, or countries that have had a much higher rate of success, he told reporters. Mr Morris said other countries, including Denmark and Greece, have similar models, where returning travellers only have to go into quarantine if they have come from a place with high levels of coronavirus or the Chinese virus is affectionately known as. Mr Morris said he was considering letting people quarantine at home instead of hotels if they fly in from low-risk countries. I think that home quarantine can play a role in the future and it's something that is being considered. We will need more flexible approach that gives us more option for managing these things. I think it is something that is under active consideration, he said. Mr Morris said home quarantine worked well in February and March when many Chinese Australians were returning from China. Hey, this Morris guy is pretty funny. Since March the 17th, only Australian citizens and permanent residents are allowed to enter Australia. They must complete two weeks of hotel quarantine at their own cost. Overseas travel is banned until 17th of December and that period may be extended. Former Thai Prime Minister Tuxin had coronavirus in late August. Yes, former Thai Prime Minister Tuxin Shinawatra tested positive for coronavirus 19, or the Chinese coronavirus if you like, at the end of August while residing in Dubai, his office has confirmed. The Prime Minister followed quarantine protocol at the time, has since recovered from the disease, according to officials close to the former Prime Minister. The news comes on a day when major world figures have revealed that they too had caught the Chinese virus. US President Donald Trump tweeted earlier on the day that both he and First Lady Melody Trump had tested positive to the coronavirus, or Chinese coronavirus, or China virus, as President Trump refers to it as, and would be self-isolating and receiving treatment. Trump and Tuxin are the latest world leaders revealed to have caught the virus. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson have also been infected and recovered. And you can bet your bottom dollar they got the best care that money could buy. The news that Tuxin had caught the Chinese virus comes just one day after the Tuxin-backed Pu Tai Party voted for a new leadership which could sign Tuxin's regaining control of the party. It'd make a good movie, this saga. What would you call it? Uh, I'll be back. <laughs> Thailand, a large crocodile killed in a canal. A 2.5 metre long crocodile lurking in the canals in Nikon Patham's Sampran district met its end on Monday after being hunted down by the village headmen hunted down around. Communities located next to the canal in the district were terrified after a large crocodile was spotted swimming in their waterways. Emergency response organisers were called in but failed to capture the crocodile, prompting fears it would escape into the nearby Thang Chan River. 
A 40-year-old village headman, Rick Tachana, armed himself with a pistol and led a team to the canal. They laid in waiting for about three hours before the animal finally emerged from the water. Rick's first shot wounded the creature, which then tried to escape by slipping into the sewer. He fired again, this time killing the crocodile. The crocodile was heard screaming, Oh shit, I've been shot! <laughs> Local residents celebrated the killing measuring the crocodile 2.5 metres long. That's a big croc. And around 80 kilograms. The local administration is now investigating where the creature came from and why it's been covered in poo. <laughs> Our next story from Nikon Pathon. Man loses balls while having a shit. <laughs> More than 50 village health volunteers from Buri Rum suffer food poisoning symptoms after coming back from Pattaya, reportedly eating in a Chinese restaurant. The Kabanburi District Chief, Mr. Wanlap Parawat Wong in Pachambri, said about 50 Buri Rum village health volunteers were being treated at a hospital for diarrhea and other symptoms. Village health volunteers say they were back from a conference in Pattaya. Some of them had experienced diarrhea since yesterday afternoon in Chambury. The group reportedly gone to eat at a Chinese restaurant. The name of the restaurant was not given due to legal reasons, although authorities are investigating the claims. Chambury health officials are more aware of the incident and are reportedly tracing the steps and movements of the group as well as speaking with the restaurant in question where the group had their little meal at. First we have the Chinese coronavirus and now we have Chinese food poisoning. Which one would you rather die from? Please leave your comments in this comment section below. Thailand produces its first seaplane. The Science and Research and Innovation TSRI has successfully tested the NAX-5 seaplane. The TSRI is also hoping the registration of the seaplane with the Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand CAAT so it can be commercially produced. Deputy Director of the TSRI said Thailand's first two-seater single-wing seaplane was built using locally produced composite materials. The plane has completed more than 200 hours of flying and was used in a reconnaissance mission, as well as for training in flood rescue missions and sea patrol. Its maximum fuel capacity is 145 litres, consuming an average of 15 to 20 litres per hour. The NAX-5 can fly for four hours at 153 kilometers an hour. The aircraft structure had to be improved. The undercarriage had to be adjusted. The landing gear has to be brought up to a better standard and its takeoff performance had to be improved. To meet with Thailand's Civil Aviation Authority's stringent guidelines. An old saying, what goes up must come down, but we want these planes to come down slowly and gently. That's why you have the Thailand Civil Aviation Authority. 